I recently watched a British miniseries called Chimera, and well, here's my review of it. Chimera aired on ITV over the course of four weeks in July 1991, consisting of a total of four episodes, which are each an hour long. The series was written by Stephen Gallagher, based on his 1982 novel of the same name, and was directed by prolific television director Lawrence Gordon Clark. The first episode follows Tracy Pickford, a nurse who moves from London to Yorkshire to start a new job at a private fertility clinic called the Jenner Clinic. She quickly learns of suspicious goings-on at the clinic, and that all is not as it seems. Why do the shady scientists keep chimpanzees locked in cages, for example? And why is there such tight security around their lab? If you guessed it's because they're conducting illegal genetics experiments, then you get a sticker, I guess. What do you fucking expect from me? At the end of the first episode, the little fucker escapes and wreaks havoc at the clinic. Killing everyone, including Dr. Jenner, and setting the place on fire. It even kills Per Tracy. So after spending a whole episode with her, she's out the door and our actual protagonist is her ex-boyfriend Peter. This dude has the floppiest hair imaginable. He's played by Irish actor John Lynch, but I could have sworn he was one of the McGann brothers. The official story is that everyone at the clinic died in a fire, but Peter figures there's more going on here than meets the eye, so he starts his own investigation into Tracy's death. The decision to have the first episode follow a different character's point of view is an odd one. We're introduced to an entire cast of characters at the clinic. And by the end of the episode, they're all dead. It makes the first episode feel somewhat disconnected from the other three. It also doesn't help that Peter's a really fucking shitty protagonist. The guy just has no personality, and sucks in comparison to Tracy, who was quite likable as the lead. Furthermore, the series as a whole suffers from having way too many characters, which further undermines Peter's role as our hero. Like, in the second episode, he meets a guy called Forrester, whose wife was a patient killed at the clinic. <laughs> It seems like these two are going to team up to uncover the truth. Honest to team up. But then Peter just fucks off back to London, while Forrester stays in Yorkshire. Because I thought maybe, just maybe, that's where they're hiding the bastard. Peter has a job as a film critic for a local paper, so he asked one of the reporters there to do some digging on the Jenner Clinic. He castrated cats without anaesthetic. <laughs> what did he find? It took him three years to decide that it put them off. We're not talking about an academic high flyer, yes. So now we have a third male lead taking screen time from Peter and our secondary male lead who's Forrester. Peter should have just been the reporter character and teamed up with Forrester from the start. All the scenes with the reporter should clearly have Peter in them, learning more about the Jenner Clinic rather than this asshole. Meanwhile, the Yorkshire police are trying to investigate the murders, but get steamrolled by the army who are trying to cover things up. This pisses off the police chief who assigns a detective to keep an eye on the situation. So now we have two more characters who are looking into this thing, separate from Peter and the reporter who are separate from Forrester. Then there's the soldiers themselves who are trying to recapture the escaped experiment. It doesn't go well. The creature ends up taking refuge in a barn on a farmyard. Hey look, the farmer's Roy off Cory. Good. That's one cool thing about Chimera. It's got a wealth of recognizable faces from British television. Like Kenneth Cranham, George Costigan, Pip Torrens, Gary Mavers from Peak Practice, Richard Durden, Gillian Barge, or maybe that's Gillian Barge, David O'Hara, David Calder, Fred Pearson, and Pippa Haywood. To name but a few. The most bizarre cameo though comes from chat show host Paul O'Grady. Hey as a sign language expert brought in to communicate with the chimps. Tell her she gets no more chocolate till she gives us an answer. <coughs> What's she saying? Um, she says she's doing her best. The monster befriends the farmer's kid, but that doesn't stop the little bastard from killing the farmer and his wife. <laughs> By now you're probably wondering what the little guy even looks like. Well, da-da! Reminds me of the fucking goblins from Troll 2. The makeup effects were done by Image Animation, who got their start working on Hellraiser and other films like Hardware. The second and third episodes honestly kind of blur together. Not that much happens in either of them, and they probably could have been just the one episode. In episode two, Peter meets Dr. Allison Wells, a female scientist played by Christine Kavanagh, who is the only surviving member from the clinic. They also don't team up. What? 
Then in episode three, Peter teams up with a different female scientist who has an interest in Dr. Jenner's research. But she disappears in episode four and he ends up teaming up with Dr. Wells. Why didn't he just do that in the first place? The other chick is Dr. Diane Romer and she leads him to Dr. Jenner's former research partner, Dr. Liowski. He's played by Sebastian Shaw, who despite being a very accomplished actor on both stage and screen, is best remembered for his less than two minutes of screen time at the end of Return of the Jedi, where he plays the unmasked Darth Vader and was the original Anakin Skywalker ghost before Hayden Christensen was CGI'd on top of him. Liaosi explains that Jenner had created a chimera, a hybrid made up of combined human and chimpanzee DNA. What? Peter tries to relay this information to his reporter friend, but he's already dead, having been accidentally killed by the army guys in a scene that happened so abruptly it's borderline hilarious. As I said, in the final episode, Peter reunites with Dr. Wells, but they're captured by the evil soldiers. Not for long, though, as they make the easiest escape imaginable. What the fuck? Was seriously no one watching them? They make their way to the farm where the Chimera is, and we learn his name is Chad. I mean, for fuck's sake. Peter goes fucking crazy. Go on lad, you earned that Oscar, or I guess in this case it would be a BAFTA. However, they realize the monster is scared and doesn't actually want to hurt anybody. So now they have to protect it. The copper shows up and takes the kids to safety, which is the only thing he does which is of any value or note. Take him. Take him. Take him. Going to harm you. This character and his plotline were totally superfluous. What is there for me to do here? Somebody's got the right to report. Wells explains to Peter that it was her who set the Chimera, sorry Chad, free because Dr. Jenner was going to terminate him. You'd think Peter might show literally any emotion at all at this revelation. I mean, she let this thing out and it killed the so-called love of his life. Shouldn't he be angry? He seems way too quick to forgive them both and decide to die on the hill of protecting the ugly little turd. In the end, they're cornered by the army and rather than have an interesting final confrontation, this happens. Oh. Well, that was lame. In the final scene, it's revealed that Chad was just the first in a long line of chimeras, and then that's it. The end. The fuck kind of bullshit was that? After taking four episodes to set up all these characters and plot threads, I'd hope there might be some actual resolution in store. That could make two of us. But no. What about the reporter who fell off the roof? What about the evil army guys? They got no comeuppance at all. I don't think Peter ever even makes the connection that they were involved in his friend's death. Not that he ever showed any emotion for the guy in the first place. I really wanted to like Chimera. The first episode with Tracy snooping around the clinic was pretty decent, but it takes a major dip in entertainment factor from the second episode on and never really recovers. I'd hoped it would pick up again in the last chapter, but it just doesn't. It's pertinent to mention that Chimera was later edited down from a four hour miniseries to a two hour movie for its American release, which was straight to VHS under the title of Monkey Boy. I'd be interested in seeing it to see how it compares, but the only copy I can find on YouTube is in horrible quality and dubbed into Polish. It's also worth noting that this series came out not long after the similarly themed BBC miniseries Firstborn, which starred Charles Dance as a scientist who creates a human-gorilla hybrid which inevitably runs amok. Man, don't they ever learn. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a copy of that anywhere online, but if I ever do so, I'll be sure to give it a review too. Isn't that nice of me? 